Welcome to Electron Line. In the previous example or the previous video, we've shown you how to calculate the equivalent Norton circuit by finding the equivalent Norton's current and the Norton's resistance. And we know that finding the Norton resistance is the same as finding the Thevenin resistance, which is simply removing any current sources and letting the voltage sources go to zero and then measuring the resistance across the open terminals from A to B. To find the current, however, we can, we can do that in a different way. We can say that the Norton current, I sub n, can be found by simply using Ohm's law, which is the Thevenin voltage divided by the Thevenin resistance. Remember that the Thevenin resistance is the same as Norton resistance, so this can be written as the Thevenin voltage divided by the Norton resistance. So all we have to do is find the Thevenin voltage, and then we can find the Norton current. Sometimes it's easier to do that than to follow the method that we saw in the previous video. To find the Norton voltage, what we need to do then is take the original circuit right here. Let's put in the current source. We have the resistance. We have the voltage source. And then we have our other resistance, terminal A and terminal B. So A and B. Plug in the values. This is 8 volts. This here is a 2 amp source, this was an 8 ohm resistor and a 16 ohm resistor. So what we're trying to do now is we're trying to find the voltage between terminals A and B, which is then known as Thevenin voltage. Once we find that, we plugged it in here, we already found the Thevenin resistance, and then we can find the Norton current. How do we do that? Well, let's see here, if we take this node right here, and let's call that V1. Then what we can also say is that there's three, there's a, that's a branch point. There's three branches entering here. So let's say we call this current I1 entering that branch. Let's call this current I2 entering that branch. Let's call this current I3 entering the branch. By saying that all the currents entering this point equal all the currents leaving this point, we can find what that V1 is equal to. And since this circuit is open right here, realizing there will be no current flowing to the 16 ohm resistor, whatever voltage I have here will be the voltage there, assuming that the reference voltage is zero at the bottom of the circuit here. Which means that V1 will then equal the Thevenin voltage in this particular example. So this V Thevenin is going to be equal to whatever we find V1 to be. So we're going to then add up the, the currents. We can say that when we sum up all the currents, sum up all the I's, that means that I1 plus I2 plus I3 must equal to zero because there are no currents leaving from that branch. I1 is easy, that is equal to 2 amps. So 2 amps plus, what is I2? Well, remember with Ohm's law, we can say that I is equal to voltage divided by the resistance. So what's the voltage drop between there and there? Well, if this is a voltage to rise of 8 volts, and this may be at a lower voltage, I can then say that Voltage across this resistor will be 8 minus V1, and I divide that by the resistance, 8 ohms. This will give me the current flowing through I2. Again, assuming that this is at 0 volts, this is at 8 volts, this will be V1. So 8 minus V1 will be the voltage across the 8 ohm resistor divided by the resistance. That will give me I2. And I3 must be 0 because there's no voltage drop from here to there because this is an open circuit. No current right there, so we can say I3 will be zero. Add all that up, that equals zero. All I have to do now is solve that equation for V1. Multiplying both sides by eight, I get 16 plus eight minus V1 is equal to zero. Moving V1 to the other side, adding these two together, 24 equals V1. Well, and we said that V1 was equal to the Thevenin voltage, and if it's equal to 24 volts, Thevenin voltage must be equal to 24 volts. At that point, I'm ready to find the Norton current. I know that Norton current is the Thevenin voltage divided by the Thevenin resistance, or Norton resistance. So I sub n, the Norton current, is equal to 24 volts divided by 24 ohms, which is equal to 1 amp, which means my equivalent circuit, this will now equal 1 amp, and the equivalent resistance here, or I should say the Norton resistance, is going to be equal to 24 ohms, which allows us now to find the current through the low resistor. And let me come over this way. 
That means that the load resistor current, I sub L, is equal to Norton's current, which is 1 amp, multiplied times R sub N, which is 24 ohms, divided by R sub N, which is 24 ohms, plus the load resistor, whatever the load resistor is. So that's how we find the current to the load resistor by following this method, which means we first find the Norton resistance, just like we did in the previous video, and then we find the Thevenin voltage, and then we can say that I Norton is equal to Thevenin voltage divided by the Thevenin resistance. And that's our second method of finding the equivalent Norton circuit and then find the current through the load resistor. And that's how it's done.